<laughs> well, actually, let me comment on the eclipse real quick. I've got a good friend in London, a guy who came up to me in a presentation and said, you know, the last time we had an eclipse like this that was this strong, total eclipse and cut right across, all the way across the United States, because eclipses don't hit everywhere. They hit in specific areas. He said, this happened at the beginning of the Civil War. I also look back, the last one like this also happened in 1918 when we had this big influenza pandemic and stuff that killed like tons of people and, and uh, affected 20 well, I was about to say, they made fun of me this week saying that generally these are a lot of times are seen as harbingers of war, doom, calamity. Well, well and, and, and usually turning points. Sometimes they can be positive, but more often than not, I mean, we've been in a very strong economy. So, so it means a new beginning, something big, a crossroads. Yes. It, it, these, I mean, again, these don't hit a place like the United States this solid very often. And when they do, it usually is a sign that there's going to be big changes. By the way, you're not into mumbo jumbo. You, I mean, your, your chart's been proven some of the most accurate out there, dealing with even not just demographics, but sunspots. And even the ancients knew this. No one really knows how it works. It, it's not mumbo jumbo. It's really something's going on. I mean, what is it with the sunspots? Let's continue down this, this line. Well, you know, I mean, sunspots are a real thing. They, they go up and down in approximate 10-year cycles, but they can vary from 8 to 13. A guy named Ned Davis had a 10-year decennial cycle for many decades, and it worked. Every, the first two to three years of every decade saw recessions and stock crashes, early 60s, early 70s, early 80s, early 90s, early 2000s. And then it Wasn't there work. an eclipse the day Christ was killed? Yes, right 30, it's the day. Uh, they did finally document that. And, and also the key turning point in the Revolutionary War for George Washington. And they said, well, they've been losing everything. And they said, we think this is Providence. Now I'm getting freaked out. Because, I mean, I was thinking, because they confirmed for the, through the Roman historians that it was true. And through Josephus, the Jewish historian. But then now with computer maps, they know the day they hung Christ high on Golgotha, they got really freaked out. Because, boom, total eclipse right over Christ hanging. Can you imagine? The skies got dark. So, I mean, this sort of stuff, again, people think, you know, sunspots, look, they go up and down. The biggest core, if you look at the economy, regardless of anything I say about demographics and other trends and cycles, we get a recession about every 10 years. Sometimes it's eight, sometimes it's 11. That's the sunspot. 2008, cycle. yeah. It goes up and it brings more energy to everybody and people get more optimistic. And when it goes down, Things go down, and and I little I when when I finally got turned on to this sunspot cycle thing by one of the largest fund managers in the country, um, I went back 150 years. 88 percent of the recessions, as far back as we can track them in this country, happen in the downside of the sunspot cycle. And if you look at major financial crises like 2008 and nine, or 73 to 74, and 30 to 32 and stuff. 100%, 11 out of 11 major financial crises happen when this sunspot cycle is pointing down, and it is pointing down. And demographic cycles are pointing down. Geopolitical cycles have been pointing down since 9-11. I've been tracked, I tracked those back 200 years. And now, this is a great chart. We have, in addition to the kind of whole debt deleveraging and bubbles bursting I've talked about, and bubbles always burst, there's no zero exception. Well, I'll tell you what's scary. Ron Paul agrees with you. That's what I said earlier. He, speak, he says it's not Trump's fault. He's doing a lot of good stuff trying to get the economy going. But, but, but he he, he's right saying, it. he says we're overdue. As he called it himself. There's no way to get out of a bubble uh, easily. They have to deleverage. Stocks have to go down, real estate has to go down, banks have to fail, companies have to fail and reorganize. But what I'm saying now and, and over the last year is that we don't just have a, a, a 1930s-like debt deleveraging coming. We have the greatest political social revolution since democracy itself in the late 1700s. Democracy met industrial revolution and free market capitalism, i.e. Adam Smith, the first and only great economists in history, as far as I see. And, and, and we've been booming ever since, because this is a perfect partnership. You know, democracy is more inclusive, like the lady you were talking to earlier, and capitalism rewards meritocracy and innovation and, and, and survival of the fittest. And, and it took these two to come together to really make the magic juice, and now we're killing it. 
and, 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 and globalization has been booming since World War II. The first surge was from the mid-1800s into World War One, when we had steamships and then railroads to facilitate trade. So globalization took off for the first time in history. And guess what? Globalization retreated from 1913 to 1945, like 32, 33 years. I think we're seeing the same thing now. This whole backlash, Trump hit it on the head when he said, look, it's not the 1% that's the problem, even though they are. And the everyday person doesn't like the fact that the top 0.1 to 1% are running away with all the wealth, which they have been in the last few decades. They're more worried about immigrant competition with immigrants and illegal immigrants. They're more worried about foreign competition and labor. And they, they really didn't like globalization like globalization made everybody prosperous for a while now now a lot of people are saying no it's more harm than good trump hit that chord won the kind of rural vote by i mean he didn't win like 60 to 40 he won like 80 percent in a lot of rural counties and that's what tipped the election and and that's why the polls didn't pick it up they're polling people in cities and stuff they don't they're not talking to people out uh, well, let's field. expand on that because the elites really want him gone. Oh. E even if they're able to defeat Trump, which I don't think will happen now, the, the public's mad at them. He, it's not Trump. He's just a manifestation of the fact the public's rejected them. Then how does that tie into all the forecasts showing a cliff? Could we escape it with the end of Obamacare, with a tax cut? Because it no, seems no, for I now mean, Trump has staved it off a little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Japan has been stimulating on a level that's three times and from three times longer than anything Europe the United States has done, and they still average zero growth over the last two or three decades. You can't, yeah, some of these things will make things better, of course, if you can cut health care costs. Of course, if you cut taxes, that's going to be good for business. It's not going to expand our economy because businesses already have too much capacity. And if you think we don't have too much capacity, go to China. Sure, sure. It's the, it, it, it's the problem of the of how good we've got it with production going up. We're actually transcending, you know, being able to work, but then that turns us into lazy slobs, so what happens?